Hello friends, now let us deal with Paget's disease of nipple. Uh, this is an eczematous eczematoid. Lesion of nipple. And it is associated with invasive. It may be associated with invasive or non-invasive ductal carcinoma so here uh, how does the patient present to you so the patient presents with a nipple which bears or which has a crusted scaly eczematoid lesion with palpable you can see a sub areolar mass below it that is a mass which is present just below the uh, areola is seen in many cases in many cases so some patients may have infiltrative carcinoma uh, sometimes they may not have any uh, lump so in them it may be intraductal carcinoma right uh, it is of two types. If there is palpable mass which you can find, then it may be an infiltrating carcinoma, infiltrating duct carcinoma. And if there is no palpable mass, then it may be an uh, uh, intraductal carcinoma. The prognosis depends upon the patients, uh, upon um, the prognosis. With this Paget's disease is less when compared to normal ductal carcinoma. So what are the pathogenesis? So coming to pathogenesis, here the major tumor cells are uh, uh, they are from underlying ductal carcinoma. First here it is necessary that a ductal carcinoma should be present for Paget's disease to occur. So the tumor cells from ductal carcinoma they invade or they mainly migrate. Right? They the tumor cells which are present in the ductal carcinoma they might have migrated into lacticiferous duct. And from the lacticiferous duct, they invade skin of the nipple, producing skin lesions. Right, this is one of the hypotheses. And the other hypothesis is here, it this pegged disease. Is a carcinoma in situ itself, and no presence of ductal carcinoma is pre is not prerequisite, right? So this is the second um, pathological feature. I mean pathogenesis. And now coming to the morphologic, but among the two pathogenesis which is mostly preferred depends upon a person. So morphological features grossly, as I have said, the skin over nipple and areola, it is crusted, fissured. And sometimes even ulcerated with oozing of serosanguinous fluid. Right, histologically speaking, there are uh, the characteristic feature of the Paget's disease is a Paget cell which is present single or in clusters. So how are these uh, paged cells and what are these paged cells? 
and these paged cells are larger than the epidermal cells and these are spherical right with hyperchromatic nucleus with a cytoplasmic hollow seen this is a cytoplasmic hollow and this change with muscle current so what are the main features the main feature is the paged cell with hype which is this paged cell how is it it is round larger and it has hyperchromatic nucleus chromatic nucleus with cytoplasmic hollow this cytoplasmic hollow stains positive with what muscle mucus current mucus carmine mucus carmine mucus carmine mucus carmine mucus carmine uh, in these respects it is mucus carmine in these respects uh, the paged cells are adenocarcinomatous type now we can say that these are adenocarcinomatous type because um, uh, these paged cells have mucus mucus carmine that is uh they have mucin this mucin carmine staining positive resembles that i mean represents that they have mucin so we can say that it is a type of adenocarcinoma right yes so now oh, along with this uh uh pet cells basically many a large number of paged cells are seen but there are ducts uh, which contain the uh, which have the same features of uh, intraductal carcinoma or uh, uh, infiltrative ductal carcinoma is also seen right but the primary feature is the presence of characteristic paged cells these paged cells are not present singly but they are present in clusters where are they present they are present in epidermis seen in epidermis and clusters and seen in clusters so this is about paged cell disease which i would like to discuss in our next class we would complete the um uh, we would complete the whole uh, a uh, breast carcinoma with the next class which is about prognosis okay bye